Honey. Hey everybody, it's Zach. I was genuinely surprised at what I found tonight during my teardown of the Wilson Amplifield 2.0. I was expecting to see one thing when I cut them in half, and I kind of found another. So I'm really excited to share this teardown with you tonight. I'm also gonna give you some of my thoughts on the best foot types, the best players, game styles, and court surfaces for this shoe. So let's get right to it. Here we go. So the first thing I wanted to know when I was tearing these down is, why are they so hard to get on? Well, I found the reason. Number one, when you cut the shoes in half, you notice really thick heel pad that locks the heel in. You can see it really well. You can see the horseshoe here when I cut the upper out. This is gonna make it a little harder to get on just because there's so much padding under there to get your foot under. The next reason is you've got obviously high top elastic material. This high top elastic is sewn into the midsole. Some of these shoes, they just sew it into the upper, other pieces of the upper while well, that is a tongue twister. And so it's not as stable. However, these are sewn into the midsole. And speaking of the heel, the solid heel counter of these shoes are actually very stiff and they run all the way to the midfoot. So that is gonna give you more lateral stability as well for these shoes. So that is a plus. Now to some parts about the upper that really excited me. Number one, metal eyelets for the laces. Now, these are a great idea for two reasons. Number one, they'll make your laces last longer because the coefficient of friction is so much less than when laces interact other fabric. There's just more friction to them, so they fray easier. Number two is it's just easier to lace them. They glide easier, so they're easier to lace. I, I like metal eyelets a lot for tennis shoes. Now, the durability test of these shoes could not have surprised me any more. I thought the Dremel was going to tear through these like they were tissue paper, and I could not have been any more wrong. Wilson's upper on these shoes is all fabric, save for the heel counter with a little bit of woven material. Otherwise, it's all fabric with some air channels here for breathability. Now, these shoes are incredibly light, and they're incredibly breathable. So that's why I thought they weren't gonna last. However, the Dremel didn't even make a millimeter of damage with highest grit sandpaper for 10 seconds. And if you peel the fabric off to reveal the padded layer of the upper underneath of it, you couldn't even tell that I did the Dremel test. So that was really surprising. And it shows that if you are sliding a lot on these shoes, they will hold up to your sliding. Now, the ironic part about that is, is Wilson put this piece of Duralast material up here to aid in protection for toe dragging. However, the Dremel did about two millimeters of damage to this. So the fabric was more durable than the Duralast, which is kind of funny. I also wanted to confirm that the ankle strap did get sewn directly into the midsole. I did find it right in the midsole right there. So you do get a little more stability on the outside lateral side of your foot. Now remember though, this is elastic, so it's not gonna prevent ankle sprains. Moving down to the insole, the removable insole, nothing special, just their proprietary removable insole. Not a lot of big support to that, no surprise there. Their sewn in insole, the non-removable insole, actually pretty thin, a little thinner than other shoes that I've seen there. So uh, that is another reason why these shoes do feel a little thin underfoot. And moving on to the midsole. The midsole was the part of the shoe that I was most interested to dissect because when wearing these shoes, I really felt like I was in a pair of five fingers or in a pair of minimalist running shoes. That's how little support I felt under my foot. I felt like my foot was touching the ground when I was in these shoes. So I wanted to see why was that. And I found out pretty quick. So when I dissected through them, I actually didn't take very long to get my knife through these as some others where I was really swiping a lot and I had to speed up the footage so that these videos didn't go on for too long. Whereas in this one, my knife went right through them. Reason for that is the midsole is super spongy. This material is not very dense. So very, very airy, very spongy midsole. It does not have a lot of density. That's gonna make your foot sink right through there and that's gonna give you that real low to the ground feeling. Now there are a lot of people that love a low to the ground feeling. And so if you do like that, these shoes are for you. The next part of the midsole that I was really interested in was this shark fin shank. I was really interested in that during the play test and I wanted to see what 4D support meant that Wilson was talking about and I found out. So when I cut transversely through the shoe, I saw this support chassis on the inside medial side, kind of right where the arch meets the heel. And I saw it's right in the area of that shark fin shank. So I cut through it and I saw, well, the shark fin and that support chassis are connected. And I thought that's really cool, but it's offset so much from the shoe. What about this plastic piece 
on the lateral flange. Why isn't that connected? So I started dissecting through the shoe and I realized they are connected. So you have the inside heel of the shoe plus the midfoot shank plus the lateral flange all connected in the shoe. That's gonna give you a lot of lateral stability in the shoe. That's also gonna give you a lot of great movement when tracking down balls. So if this shoe has any rigidity whatsoever, it's from that. And I think that's why Wilson tried to make the midsole a little lighter and spongier because they thought they could get away with that with using that shark fin shank, support truss on the inside and lateral flange on the outside all connected. So with those support trusses and the really thin midsole, the conclusion has to be that these shoes are great for clay, maybe not so much for hard courts, because the midsole isn't gonna give you as much cushion on a hard court, but on a soft clay court, it's not really gonna matter. The court's gonna give you more cushion anyway. These shoes give you the light feeling, they give you good support with that support truss, and they're breathable and durable to sliding. So if you're a baseline grinder who plays a lot on clay and slides a lot, these are a great shoe. And looking at the outsoles of these shoes, you do see a little bit of outsole material coming up over the toe box. I'd like to see a little more from that. Tread pretty chunky here for a clay court. I never slid even on bone dry clay these gripped. Dremel test showed two millimeters of damage to here. Now that's in contrast to the Vapor Cage 4s, the GP Turbos, the Gel Resolution 8s, all which had a millimeter or less of damage. So the tread is not as durable for a hard court. However, if you're playing on clay, it doesn't matter as much. Now, the one thing about this shoe that I do not like, and it's another way that Wilson got away with making these shoes a lot lighter is, the last is in flared. Okay, so you can see it here when the shoe is still together, that in flare, which means the, sh the last of the shoe, the shape of the shoe flares inward towards your body. And you can see it really well uh, when I have the shoe opened up like this. You can just tell the shoe like this. Now that's not going to be as supportive of a shoe as say something like the Adidas Stycon, which is basically a straight last of a shoe. That's going to give you a lot more stability, a lot wider of a base. I like a, sh a tennis shoe with a very wide base. I think that prevents a lot of twisting injuries. Now these shoes are high tops. They have a lot of support features on them. And so making an inflared last does make the shoe lighter because there's not as much material in the shoe. So you are gonna get a lighter feel on the shoe. However, you're not gonna get as much support as say something with a straight last, which has more material in the midfoot of the shoe. So if you have a wider foot or even a narrow foot because of the vacuum seal on these, these shoes are gonna fit you fine. There's no break in time to them. If you're playing exclusively on hard courts or say you have any joint pain, knee pain, hip pain, maybe steer clear, go somewhere else. However, if you are playing on clay and all you need is speed, grip, and durability, these are your shoe. Now, just as a reminder, we do have a head-to-head -head in the world of ASICs coming up. We also have the teardown of the Onyx Eclipsian 3s, as well as the best orthotics for tennis videos coming up. So if you don't wanna miss those, click the subscribe button and notification bell. That's all for tonight. I hope you guys have a great day, great night, wherever you're tuning in from. I'll see you next time.